16, Jude chapter 1, of course, it's only one chapter, verse 14 and 15. <clears throat> Let's read this and let's get the revelation of God's word. <coughs> Excuse me. Here we go. It was of these people, moreover, that Enoch in the seventh generation from Adam prophesied. Well, what did Enoch prophesy? When he said, Behold, the Lord comes with his my raids of holy ones, ten thousands of his saints. Now we know that he's talking about the second coming of Christ there. Look at that on the board now. But who's coming with him? The saints. How many see that? So you've got to see it in the scriptures. People miss that sometimes. So he's coming, and we know that he's coming. That's the second coming. And he's coming to do something which the next verse tells us what he's going to do. The next very verse. The next verse. But he's coming with all of these saints. So that means we got to get up there before we come back with him. Does that make sense? You got that? All right. That makes sense. But what is he coming? Well, he's coming to execute judgment. Now remember, we're not in that picture. We're with the Lord. And there's other scriptures to verify that out. So he's coming to execute judgment on Paul all and to convict all the impious unholy ones of all their ungodly deeds which they have committed in such an ungodly way and of all the severe abusive jarring things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him now when i read that scriptures i think of isis my goodness ungodly ways they kill children. They kill people, moms, dads, ungodly ways. That's why Jesus is coming back at a second coming to execute judgment, not upon his people. Christ took our judgment already for us. He took our death, our sins. He took everything that we might have in our life to offend him. It all fell, fell upon Jesus at Calvary. He had no death, the Bible says. So he's coming. Why is he coming? He's coming to execute judgment. That's the tribulation years. Now we've got to see that picture. Look at verse 18. Put verse 18 up there. And you get a chance, you need to read the book of Jude. It's all about the ungodly. And there's some things in there about the godly also. They told you beforehand, in the last days, in the end time, there will be scoffers who seek to gratify their own unholy desires, falling after their own ungodly passions. Well, we see that in the world today. How it grieves my soul when I read in the scriptures. There's two things that have to happen <clears throat> before the Antichrist is revealed. One is there's got to be the great falling away. Those that leave the faith. To leave the faith, you have to be in the faith. To leave the faith. Now, I know that this is not maybe a real edifying message, but we know we've got to know the truth if we're going to help people and know what's going on in our day. Jesus told the Pharisees, if you'd have known the day of your visitation, you'd have changed some things. And it could change some big things in their life because, because they did not know the day of their visitation, 70 A.D., when Jerusalem was destroyed. Over a million Jews were destroyed. 
with them. But some of them knew the day of their visitations, the Christians that remembered his word, and they fled and escaped that great persecution that Titus and the Roman soldiers came in and destroyed Jerusalem and, and took the Jews captive and spread them all out, of the, all out through the world. Of course, we know today they're coming back. They're back in their nation again. But there's many more in the world that's coming back. So look what it says. They told you beforehand in the last days, in the end time, there will be scoffers who seek to gratify their own unholy desires, following after their own ungodly passions. You know, I'm not a mean man. But I see a lot of things happening today, and so do you, that shows us that we're in the last days. And I don't like what I see. But it's been prophesied. So my determination is to let my light shine in a greater way than ever before. Because the darker the night is, the brighter the light's going to shine. Yes. So the darker it gets, the brighter that all of us should shine. To snatch people out of the kingdom of darkness and bring them into the kingdom of the Son of God. Boy, that is my heart's desire as a soul winner. I thank God for that. Now here's a little something, and if you ever get a chance, read all of this. But look at verse 20. Now he's talking to the Christians. He's not talking about the scoffers. He's not talking about uh, those that judgment is going to come upon. But he's talking about people in the last days. And here's what he says. But you, beloved, shield of faith, build yourself up, founded on your most holy faith, make progress, rise like an Ephesus higher and higher, praying in the Holy Spirit. That means that during the darkest time, we're going to have to be like Naomi. Find a closet. And if you live in a house that don't have closet. Build you a closet. <laughs> or have one room you can call closet and get into your closet and pray in the Holy Ghost. That means praying in tongues. Look at verse 21. Guard and keep yourselves in the love of God. Oh boy, can I milk that? Is there somebody in your life that you don't love? Now, we're not talking about loving their ways, but loving them is God's creation. Yeah, but you don't know what they did to me. I don't need to know. All I, I'm telling you is your pastor, love them with, listen, we must understand when we were born again, God gave us his nature. Listen to me now. His nature is love. It's not hate. It's not destruction. It's not gossip. Hallelujah. It's love. Every one of you that are Christians have the nature of God in you. And in his nature is love. God has power. But God is... But God is... God is love. And therefore God's love has been shed in our heart by the Holy Ghost. How many squeals on themselves in here? Don't milk that, Bob. Can I milk it just a little bit? <laughs> did you know what I did the other day? You won't tell nobody, will you? Ice cream? How'd you know? <laughs> Don't you tell nobody. <laughs> How about that? Because he won't tell nobody. Hey, go ahead and tell somebody. <laughs> How many tells on yourself in here? Come on, don't lie to your pastor. Ain't none of you telling on yourself. You know what you did last night. Tell me what you did. 
I prayed, thank you, Mom. Good. And what else did you do? Tell on myself. Yeah, but if you saw your brother do it, you'd tell on them, wouldn't you? Uh, come on, church. Come on now, I'm going to milk that. No, I'm not going to milk that no more. Somebody say, ouch. Anybody seeing themselves in the message yet? Repent. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Amen. All right, listen. Guard and keep yourself in the love of God. Expect and patiently wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, which will bring you into life eternal. What do you mean, wait? This kind of wait? Is he talking about this kind of wait? Did he say gain weight? I thought he said gain weight. I've interpreted that scripture all these years, and I've been gaining weight. No, wait. What are we waiting on? How many of you know he's coming back for those that are waiting, waiting for his appearance? So here we see another scripture that the Christ is going to come. Now, let's go back to 14, verse 14. Make sure we understand this scripture. Jude 14. Come on, Jude. I know you're out there. There he is right there. It was of these people, moreover, that Enoch in the seventh generation from Adam prophesied when he said, Behold, the Lord cometh. Well, that's great. Well, who is he coming with? Huh? All right. If he's coming with us folks, somewhere we got to get up there to come back with him. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. So, evidently, we were caught up in the rapture. Now, yeah, but when is the rapture going to take a place? Just relax. We're going to cover that. We're going to cover that. Remember, that day will not catch you unaware. Because you're not children of darkness. You're children of light. The Bible says sudden destruction will come upon them. Well, who in the world is them? Them that the judgment of God is going to fall upon. How many see that? Connecting scriptures with scripture. Okay. Behold, the Lord cometh with his... Am I pronouncing that right? My braids. My braids of holy ones. That's us. Ten thousand of his saints. Some would say, I'm a holy one. Talking about me there. I'm the holy one. Do you see yourself holy? Do you see yourself blameless? Do you see yourself consecrated? Do you see yourself as a child of God? Do you see yourself in love with God? Do you see yourself being caught up in the rapture? Do you see yourself in love with Jesus? So as a man sees himself in his heart, so is that man. So as a man thinketh in his heart, so is that man. So as a man seeth in his heart, so is that man. See, you've got to see it. There's certain imaginations that we need to cast down. Casting down every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring every thought into the obedience of Christ. But there are imaginations that, that come from the Word of God. I can see the throne of God. You know why I can see the throne of God? Because I've read Revelation. And I saw him sitting on the throne and I saw the rainbow and I saw the, 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 the crystal floor look like the sea, just as calm as it can be. I saw those four creatures up there. I saw all those angels up there. I saw Jesus up there with the scroll. And he's about to open the seals. I see all of that in my mind, in my heart. All right, so let's put the next scripture up. Now we're with the Lord. Now what is Jesus coming, what is Jesus coming back at the second coming for? To execute judgment upon all the saints. No. No. Execute judgment upon all 
and to convict all the impious, unholy ones of all their ungodly deeds which they have committed in such an ungodly way and of all the severe, abusive, jarring things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. And when they speak against you, they're speaking against him. Hello? You know your Bible? All right, I'll put you to the test. When you've done it unto the least of these, you what? Done it unto me. I know God was talking about the Jews, but we're connected to Abraham too. He's our father also through faith in Christ. I want you to turn now, if you will, to Colossians 3, 4. Colossians 3, 4. Colossians 3, 4. There's so much in Colossians. In fact, let's start with verse 1. Back up a little bit to get the, more, the better gist of this. <clears throat> this is all good. <clears throat> if then you have been raised with Christ... Has anybody in here been raised with Christ? Yeah. Wave at me. Wave at me. Woo! That's great. To a new life. Have you been raised to a new life? Yeah. Do you still do all the old things? How many still going to the honky tonks? Why are some of you smiling? How many still sing the song, There Stands the Glass, Fill it up to the brim? Remember, remember that? You remember that, don't you? Y'all looking at me like y'all just, uh, come on, church. No, I know you don't. I know. See, if any man be in Christ, he, old things have passed away. Those things have passed away. I ask you, have they passed away in your life? Do you still argue with your wife? Do you still argue with your husband? That is quiet in here. Anybody alive in this place this morning? <laughs> now, remember, if we see me in the message, just grunt a little bit. Hold on to your chair and say, God, help me, oh Lord. Give me the grace and the mercy to overcome those tendencies, those things that don't please you. What's the scripture on that? Right, James 4, 6. Read it when you get a chance. He will give you the grace, the mercy, the strength, the power of the Holy Ghost to overcome. That ain't just words, brother. I'm 82 years old, and I've overcome some things in my life. <laughs> Except ice cream. <laughs> but don't give up on me. Keep praying. I heard, I had a brother that, that, that really surprised me. He, he, he takes ice cream and, and, and puts it in his coffee. You got sugar, you, know, you got cream. So he don't buy cream, he don't buy sugar. He just buys ice cream, uh, Willie. The trouble with me, the time morning came, I'd have no ice cream for my, for my coffee. Because I didn't eat it during the night. <laughs> Or if I didn't, Susan would get up and probably eat it, you know what I mean? <laughs> but that's not bad. I thought about that, you know. You save on your cream, you save on your sugar, just buy ice cream. And, and swell up. Look, at, I know I don't have to be humorous, but it helps you a little bit to digest what I'm preaching this morning. <laughs> All right, I want to show you something here now. Let's finish reading. All right, here we go. If then you have been raised with Christ to a new life, thus sharing his resurrection. We have to understand. Would you bring, uh, David, would you bring the cross up here for me, please, real quick? Like, 
We have to understand that once you receive Christ as your personal Savior, you become a child of the devil no more. Before you were saved, you were a child of the devil. I mean, except me. <laughs> Some of you didn't laugh at that, because you know that ain't true. Uh, if you want to find that, it's in the Bible. Uh, Jesus told the Pharisees that, and it's also in Ephesians chapter 2. You read that in there. But anyway, see, we were over here. We were blind, living in darkness. Satan was our, uh, our God. The God of this world who is Satan has blinded us from the glorious light of the gospel. And then one day Bob comes along and preaches the gospel. And one of our brothers and sisters there preaches the gospel. And you see the light. And then all of a sudden you pass through the cross. And you see, Jesus was nailed to the cross. I got news for you. Your old man was too. Hello? Jesus is there, and you are there. We died with Christ. So therefore, we have no obligation whatsoever to try to please the, fre the fresh. That's a good one. <laughs> the fresh, you get that? No, flesh. Now that's a process of growing and maturing. That's a process of sanctification. That's a process of letting God do his work in us, making us willing to do his good pleasure. Now our soul is full of the old world, of the old habits. You hit me, you wake up on the moon. But you see, God allowed all that to die at Calvary. Legally, it's dead. Then we step over here in the resurrection. Notice what it says. Thus sharing his resurrection. How much of resurrection are we sharing with Christ? Think about it for a moment. Now, you know, I'm not trying to condemn nobody, but we've got to think this thing through. How much of the resurrected life now you'll see something here in this, in this scripture here. Now look, from the dead, aim at and seek what? The rich things on the earth. Don't miss your Friday night toddies. Aim at and seek the rich eternal treasures that are above where Christ is seated is seated at the right hand side of God. Now who is seated there with, with him? We are. Resurrected. Raised with Christ. We are seated there with him in the heavenly places. Go to the next verse now. And set your minds on things down on the earth. No, and set your minds and keep them. How many have ever, how many sets their clock on Saturday night to get up at 7 o'clock where you won't miss church? How many have a clock? <laughs> so I set the clock at quarter to 7. Well, we won't, because, because we got it worked out where I can be over here by uh, 8.30. And I can have my coffee and check my email, make sure, and get ready, take my shower. And Susan puts my bow tie on. How many like that tie? Yeah, hey, you can have it. <laughs> Sorry, honey. I love my bow tie. Don't you lie to the pulpit, Bob. Oh, God, forgive me. No, I do wear this because I love my wife. It brings great pleasure to her for me to have a bow tie on. Even though I'm choking to death. I don't see anywhere in the Bible to be sad and weary and mean and honorary. I, I, we are to have joy in our souls. Amen. The joy of the Lord is my strength. All right, now set your minds and keep them set on 
what is above the higher things, not on the things that are on the earth. I can't do that, Bob. I know you can't. That's why you got to let God do the work in you. Then it'll be no problem. But as long as you're trying to do it in your own strength and in your own power, you're going down. But when you come to that realization, it is God working in you. In you. Making you and me willing to do his good pleasure. And then all of a sudden, it's the most natural thing in the world when God's nature is operating in your life to love the unlovely. There's no effort. None whatsoever. No effort. Everybody say, no effort. But brother, it is an effort if you think you're going to love him with your flesh. But when you let God do that work in you, I'm not talking about hell and heaven here. You're saved. You can't get no more saved than you are right now. But how about experimental sanctification when you begin to, your candle begins to burn bright and people begin to, to see Jesus in you and see you reflect Jesus in your attitudes and actions and reactions. Not fussing, just preaching well, see, I'm trying to get you to focus on the Lord and focus on those things that, that are above. Now, let's go to the next scripture. I love this. For as far as this world is concerned, you have died. See, I've died to this world. All right. And your new real life is hidden with Christ in God. Now, you accept all that by faith. You accept it by faith, your real life. <clears throat> now it takes a little while for God to get all of those old soulish things out of your soul where you won't give in to them and put new stuff in your soul, which is the word of God and his will. And it's so easy because see, you're going to follow after that which you think. No. Can we understand that? You and I are going to follow after what we think. I guarantee you. You're sitting there watching TV. You just had a big dinner. Steak, uh, mashed potatoes, apple pie with ice cream, a gallon of uh, tea, string beans, butter beans, pork and beans, lava beans, and cabbage. And you're sitting down... And you think about that little piece of ice cream, a little bit of pie and ice cream still in there. And you look around, make sure the wife don't see you. You go, you go after it. How many ever done that besides me? Come on, raise your hand. Let me see, let me see the honest people in here. One back there, one, there. yeah, yeah. I better take care of that before Susan gets it. Because <laughs> she don't look, you know, well, anyway. <laughs> All right, here we go. Now, look at... Four. This is really what I want you to see. Colossians 4. Are you ready? 3, 4. When Christ, who is our life, say, Christ is my life. You can't produce it. But when you let God work in you, he will work that old life out of you, that old soulish life out of you, and his life will begin to manifest in your life, and you live and you act and you react out of his life. See, this is supernatural we're talking about. It's not going to church and being a good church member. It's a matter of God working in us. That we allow him to work in us. And every situation you find yourself in is going to dig up that old man. And either you're going to curse people or you're going to bless people. When you let God do that work in you, you will bless them. You want the scripture on that? 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 8 and 9. Might turn to it before we end here. I haven't got to really what I want to preach on, but I'm heading that way. Can't believe it. it's almost time to, for supper. Wow. All right, let's read this. Now, I want you to get the revelation in this scripture. I want to see if you see it. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in the splendor of his glory. Now, 
I'm putting that down as the second coming of Christ. How many would agree to that? And we appear with him. Well, we got to get up there at some point to appear with him. How many see that? How many don't see it? You need to see it. This is revelation. In that scripture, if we're going to appear, and remember we just read the scriptures a while ago, the other scripture, the first uh, Thessalonians chapter 4. Remember that? If you don't remember it, but maybe we need to go back. Um, when Christ, who is our life, so Christ is my life, appears, that's the second coming of Christ, then you also will appear with him. Well, if we're going to appear with him, we got to get up there with him to come back with him to appear with him. Do you see that? Amen. How many sees that? Amen. All right. See, this is revelation knowledge. The average person doesn't see that. I read it years ago. I didn't see that. Rachel, you see that? Rick, you see that? Susan, you see that? Bob, you see that? Yep, I see him. I surely do. When Christ, who is our life, number one, he's our life. When he up, when appears, then you also will appear. Who, who, then you, who, who is you? Identify you. Say me. me. Also will appear. Well, how in the world did I get up there if I'm going to appear with him when he comes? There must be a rapture somewhere. All right. Now the point is, is the rapture pre-trib, mid-trib, somewhere in the trib, within, somewhere within that seven year? Well, we'll have to search the scriptures out. The Bible says, we read that in our Sunday school class this morning. But the Holy Spirit, when he comes, he will show you the future. He will show you things to come. So you see it by the Holy Spirit. That's in John. I think it's 15. All right. I'll drink to that. This is a hot job up here preaching, you know that? <laughs> Let's look at Zechariah 14.5. Let's get over to the Old Testament. Zechariah. 14.5. Zechariah 14.5. Whoops. There we go. Zechariah 14.5. We're all there. How about that? Are we there? All right. Are we ready to read? And you shall flee by the valley. Now he's talking to the Jews here. This is over there in Israel. He's talking to the Jews at this point. And you, that's the Jewish people. They're in Jerusalem. Maybe a few Gentiles mixed up in there. Probably will be. By the valley of my mountains. For the valley of the mountains shall reach to Zazar. And you shall flee as you fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. And the Lord, my God, or Zechariah's God, or our God, my God, shall come. All right, so he shall come. That's the second coming of Christ. But who is he coming with? Anybody can see anything on that scripture? Who is he coming with? Huh? That's us. Shall come and all the holy ones, saints, and angels with him. So, this is the second coming of Christ, prophesied in Zechariah that he's coming and he's coming with. Remember, we've been reading that. With the saints, the holy ones, with him. So, all of this is. Be He's talking about when he comes and lands on Mount Olive and it splits. All right, let's read a little bit more on that. That's five. In fact, let's back up to verse one now. I ain't got much more time and I haven't got to really what I want to preach on, but at least I'm giving you some background and some things that you can anchor your soul to. Behold, a day of the Lord is coming. Well, that's good news. 
When the spoil taken from you shall be divided among the victors in the midst of you. This is during the time of the Armageddon War. Israel is surrounded with all the nations. They're coming in crushing, going to crush Jerusalem. The Antichrist is, is the one that's planned all of this to absolutely destroy every Jew on the face of the earth, listen to this now, where God's promise to give them the promised land won't happen. How many know your Bible? Well, you think you do. And notice what it says. Here's what I want you to see. Satan is working today. I want you to look at ISIS situation. We know what just happened in Paris. How many in here knows what happened in Paris the last two days? So I'm talking to the right crowd. Satan is a duplicator. He follows what the Lord does. Now, catch my thought here. We just read that the second coming of Christ is to bring judgment upon the ungodly. That's the, one of the purposes of the second coming. Another purpose is that he's got to fulfill the 70th year of Daniel, which relates to the Jews. Everybody know that. Daniel 9, 27, 9, right in Daniel in there. Now the devil is going to do everything he can to destroy every Jew. Okay? That when he comes, there won't be no Jew to save. And so Satan say, say to uh, the Lord, Lord, I'll save you a, a trip. You won't have to come because there ain't no Jews left. How many of you understand that for years and years and years and hundreds of years, Satan has been at work trying to kill every Jew on planet Earth? How many of you understand that? Yeah. World War II, six million Jews. And he's still at it. To discredit the word of God. Now I want you to think for a moment. Look at ISIS. Satan, they're puppets of Satan. Remember what you read, uh, you saw in that movie, we fight not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. Naomi, you remember you saw that? We, don't, we, we, we pray against principalities and powers. We're not each other's enemies. A lot of people don't know that yet, so they fight with people. Well, we fight not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. We fight against the spirits behind ISIS which is the Antichrist spirit. And you'll see that in, in 1 John 4, about the Antichrist spirit. Paul, uh, John said it was in the world in that day. And brother, it is in the world today like never before. And we see that. Now look, Satan is using ISIS to kill every Christian. And Lord, that'll save you a trip to come down and uh, receive us unto yourself because there'll be no bride here and we are your bride. So Satan is after the bride of Christ. You wonder why Satan is after you? You're part of the bride of Christ. Amen. And so he'll kill, Satan will kill every Christian through his puppets, ISIS and all of the other terrorist groups. Hello, are you out there? Yes. So you got to see the spiritual battle in the heavenlies. Yes. We don't want to be like the, 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 the prophet's uh, ser servant. He went out there and he saw all oh, these multitudes of natural army, a oh, bunch of ISIS out there. He runs back to his master, says, Master, we're surrounded. Yes. And the prophet said, <laughs> Lord, show, open his eyes. That they might see that there's more with us than them. Has your eyes been opened yet? I said, has your eyes been opened yet? Because you better know the day we live in to keep your life straight and to stand fast in that liberty wherewith Christ has set us free. 
because I, 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 I'm not a, I'd rather preach a good positive message, but I'm telling you when I see, oh God help me, and I know sometimes you can't help because of the divorces. Christian people get in divorces. And I know there's two sides to every, every side. Understand, I'm not against you. I've helped many of you to find life again after that divorce. But that's all part of the falling away. That's one of the things that have to happen before, before the Antichrist can be revealed. And there's one other thing. He that restraineth must be removed. And then the Antichrist will be revealed. That scripture. I had time to go into it. How many understand what I'm talking about? And I'm not saying that to be mean. And I know there's two sides. Every, and, I, and I understand. And I know your situations. All of you. And I prayed with you. And I stood with you. And I tried to teach you how to stand in the midst of the storm. But all of that, what you see, is part of the last days. Many shall give heed to seducing spirits. There's a spirit battle out there. And you wonder why all of this here stuff coming against your mind all the time. That's the principalities of powers of evil spirits that are trying to capture you. But Paul says we're not ignorant of his devices. But so many Christians are. Yeah, you could go after some other flesh, but I tell you what, it'll be flesh. I, this must be good. I see Rose over there rocking. <laughs> she said, Peace it, Bob. <laughs> How many love me? <laughs> Am I not telling the truth? I wish I wasn't telling the truth. I wish I could say all was well. But what you see over there in Paris and, and Brussels and other parts of the world, yes, it's over there. Oh, how about our, what about New York back? Remember the, 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 the big building? You remember the big buildings? What happened to them? That was ISIS killing 3,000 Americans. It's happening already in our world. And for a while, everybody got holy for about a week. <laughs> And they were passing the bar and the, their car was so used to turning in there that it just turned in there. And they didn't mean to drink that whole, you know, drink the place dry. But see, old habits are hard to break. Some of you still trying to break old habits. I want to encourage you. Hang in there. Fight the good fight of faith. Guard your own soul. We do not fight against flesh and blood, but we fight against principalities and powers. They're ever working against us. Was well, there any good thing about Christianity? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. When the ungodly is burning in hell, we'll be in heaven. Woo! Hallelujah! For out eternity, we will be in a resurrected body. We will reign and rule with Jesus Christ on this earth. There's no doubt about me. They got a planet out there named Brother Bob. Now, Bob, I want you to go over there to that planet and make heaven out of it. Yes, sir, Lord. I'm there. See, so you travel fast. You know, you don't have to go by Atlanta when you have your residence. You understand that? Say, so, so you don't have to go by Atlanta to get on a. No, no, you're there. Now, you don't have to stop by Hardy's, which is, you know, not too bad. <laughs> Say, we got a great future, and the devil don't want us to have a good future. He's a party pooper. He says, oh, sin is fun. Yes, I found out that sin is fun for a, for a, but afterwards, you better read the rest of that scripture. What was it? I forgot. <laughs> sin is fun for a season, but afterwards. Afterwards, see, there's always payday. There's payday for the righteous, and there's payday for the wicked. You remember the tree of life? It was in the garden. Then there was another tree. Tree of good and evil. 
Did you know every day there's the tree of life and there's the tree of good and evil and every day we have to choose. And I'm afraid I still see that and it hurts my heart and I love people but they're still eating from that tree of good and evil. With this beautiful tree over here that promises eternal life which is Jesus Christ eating from him. He's the manner of, from heaven. Unless you drink my blood and eat my flesh. Now you don't mean that literally. But by faith we do when we take of the cup and the bread. Every day you've got to make decisions. Every day I have to make decisions. And either I will either pick evil or I'll pick good. But that's why when you're grounded in God and you let the Holy Spirit lead and direct you, you will eat less of the tree of evil and good and you'll start eating more from the tree of life. Jesus. Jesus. But God has given us a will and we have to choose. We have to choose. Moses said, I put before you life and death. All the blessings, all the cursing. That's the tree of life. I mean, that's the tree of good and evil. We still have to confront that. Today, we have a will. Yeah, but I don't like my will. Okay, then I'll take your will away and you just have to follow me all around. What I want you to do, I want you to go out there and pick all of the grass out of my front yard and you can knock off about, let's see, you start at 8 o'clock. You can uh, finish, work right on to 8 o'clock. You want your will back? <laughs> Am I getting through? <laughs> now, now what I want you to do, I want you to marry this woman. I know she don't have no teeth, she don't have no hair. <laughs> Sounds like my grandmother. <laughs> She's all wrinkled up, she's old. Her youth has been gone 30 years ago. But you marry her and you'd be a good husband. How many want their will back? <laughs> huh? You better thank God for your will. But you've got to learn to choose. Choose you this day whom you will serve. Now my car, it doesn't have a will. But it has a steering wheel. And so help me. When I go by Hardy's. If I don't hold that wheel tight, and Susan's over there helping me, we're both, that thing wants to turn into the Hardys. And so the years go by, <laughs> how many love me just a little bit? I th listen, let me tell you something. I think when I, at my age, at 82, I don't have to eat anything and I gain weight. <laughs> Just because you're skinny don't mean you're not a gluttoner. I know this guy was skinny. He could eat everything on the table, go down to Hardy's, eat every, every Hardy burger down there, go over to McDonald's, clean that house out, and he stays, he stays skinny. How many of you ever met anybody like that? And I get around food, <laughs> Huh? Come on, love me. Especially them donuts. Oh, my. You ought, to, you ought to see the struggle I have going by the donuts. And, and Oh. Susan actually puts a lease on me when I go to, when I go to uh, Walmart. But she knows when I go by them donuts. And then I look and she's gone. And I go back to the donuts and she's over there picking the donuts. I'm going to put a lease on her. Come on, love me now. You're getting the truth of the matter. That's the main thing. Some of you haven't laughed so long, your face is getting dry. <laughs> if you laugh, your face would crack. I'm trying to loosen you up. That way the Lord can put you on the potter's wheel. <laughs> ah, you look more like Jesus every day. <laughs> <laughs> All right, 10 more minutes, I've got to let you go. All right, let's read this. Are we ready? 
All right, we see what's going to happen when they come in and they're trying to destroy uh, the Jews to save, okay? That's what the devil's trying to do. Wipe them out and trying to wipe you out. Some of you don't believe that. Stick around. If I'm still here, I'll preach your funeral. Won't charge you nothing. Next verse. For I will gather all nations. Who is I? God will gather all nations. Well, God would never do that. Read the scriptures. Gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the houses raffled, and the woman ravished, and half of the city shall go into exile, but the rest of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Next verse. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations. That's all those Arab nations. That's all those nations there in Europe that comes against Jerusalem. All the nations. Let's hope that our nation will not be involved in that. But it says all nations. As when he fought in the day of battle. Next verse. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives. When he went up in his ascension, where did he ascend from? Somebody tell me. Hmm? Mount Olive. When you read the scriptures, everything is over there. Now, it affects the rest of the world. I want you to see the picture. Where was the Garden of Eden? Over there. Where was Adam and Eve? Over there. Where was the flood? Over there, and it affected the whole world. Solomon Gomorrah, over there, the raft of God fell. Jesus was born, over there. Jesus was crucified, over there. Jesus ascended into heaven, over there. Jesus coming back, over there. Did you notice that everything happened in parish? In parish, that's a good, parish. We saw, how many, how many saw that on TV? Hold your place right there and turn to Revelation 1 7. And we're going to be closing here in five minutes. So don't. All right, are you ready? It's up on the board. And we'll come back to that. We have time. Revelation 1 7. Behold, behold, he's coming with the clouds, and every eye shall see him. Now, you know, if I was preaching this message 75 years ago, the question would come to our minds well, how in the world is every eye? We'll see him. Now, how many has the answer to that? Let's see your hands. All right. If you don't have the answer to that, TV. And then all those other little things we have. What do you call them? Out of space gadgets. (laughs) You could be in your car and you could see. What's that coming? It looks like a man on a horse. I ain't never seen no horse in the sky. And there's a man on that horse. What's all that's coming back with him? Hey, there's Brother Bob. Yeah, yeah I, see, I see Rose. Yeah, yeah, hey, Rose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's Susan over there. She don't like to, she don't like to ride white horses. But hey, you're going to love this one, honey. And there's Missy on the other white horse. Yeah, that's busy. Uh-huh. All coming back. At the second coming of Christ. So that means somehow we got to get up there. And that'll be the rapture. All right. Now. Let's finish reading that. Behold, he is coming with the clouds. Now, how many of you know there's such a great cloud of witnesses in Hebrews that talks about up there? Uh, when I see the clouds, I think about 
you know, with the clouds, uh, that's us, by the way. <laughs> We're those clouds of witnesses. You can either take that or leave it on the shelf. And every eye will see him. How? By television. Those Christian networks have their cameras actually set on Mount Olive right now. Praise the Lord has a camera right there ready when he comes. How many knew that? Yeah, they're ready. See, there's a lot of people know this is true and they're ready. They're getting ready. They are ready. Even those who pierced him, that's the Jewish people that shall see him. In a sense, we all pierced him with our sins. And all the tribes of the earth shall gaze upon him and beat their breasts and moan and, l- and lament over him. Even so must it be, so be it. There's a lot in that that we could talk about, but just hold that picture and see that every eye will see him. That is not the rapture. Every eye will not see him when he comes after the church. When we're caught up together to be with the Lord, then we shall see him. That's a powerful scripture there. All right, I want to go ahead and... uh, We don't have much time, but I do want to share one more scripture in John 14. John 14, and we'll close on this. If you really want to get a better understanding, read all of uh, Zechariah 12, 13, and 14. Also, Ezekiel 36 and 37. And 38-39, the Gog War, Magog War. St. John 14. Here we go. It's up on the board. Now, in all of this that we've been talking about, Jesus has given us a word He says, do not let your hearts be troubled, distressed, agitated. Oh, there's a lot of things that can distress us, isn't it? A lot of things agitate us. Don't let it happen. You believe in and heave to and trust in and rely on God. Believe in and heave to and trust in me and rely also on me. Next verse. In my Father's house, There are many dwelling places, homes. If it were not so, I would have told you. For I am going away to prepare a place for you. Now that's one of the reasons that Christ went away to prepare a place for us. But he sent his Holy Spirit to live in us, to show us things yet to come and to teach us. All right, next verse. And when if I go and make ready a place, well, I believe he doesn't lie, so I believe he's made a place for me and you, I will come back again. Hmm. Well, why are you coming back, Lord? And will take you to myself. Now, that doesn't sound like the second coming, because the second coming, he's coming down to stay. Everybody see that? And he's going to walk in that eastern gate, through that eastern gate. And the Muslims have that concrete wall up there, and those graveyards right in front of that eastern gate. I don't know how he's going to get through it. I mean, after all, he just came on a horse all the way from heaven down here. If he figured that out, I ain't worried about those cement blocks. (laughs) All of a sudden, it's gone. (laughs) The king is coming through. (laughs) And I will take you to myself that where I am, you may be also. So he's coming in, he's going to take us, he's going back to heaven. We're going to have seven years up there of good times with the Lord. We'll be rewarded. 
The judgment seat of Christ will take place and we'll be rewarded. The things that we did by the Spirit and through the power of the Holy Spirit, we will be rewarded for that. If we've done anything out of our own flesh, we'll be, we won't get no rewards for that. All right, read the next verse. And to a place where I am going, you know the way. Do we know the way? Yes. And may I ask the question, who is the way and what is the way? Jesus. Jesus is the way. We got Jesus in us and we're in Jesus. And when he comes, he's coming for a reason. And he went to heaven for a reason. Yeah, he's interceding up there for us as our high priest. But he's up there making sure we got a room. I can see my room right now. I got a large refrigerator. <laughs> One refrigerator is full of ice cream. In case you come by my room and see me, I want something to serve you. <laughs> Folks, let me tell you something. Just go God's way. You, can't, you cannot miss it. Just go God's way. He's prepared a place for us. He's coming again to take us unto himself. That where he is, we will be also. And I just want to thank him for the word of God. That we can see the future through the word of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. We give you praise and glory. You are worthy to be praised. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. And uh, if anyone here that does not know the Lord Jesus Christ, you need to come up and make it public. The Bible says, if you confess me before man, I will confess you before my heavenly Father in heaven. That's why we invite people to come up where you can confess him before this congregation which confirms your salvation. So if you need to come, come and talk to me and let us pray for you because you're going to need prayer if, you, if you've given your life to Christ. You need to come. Come right now. We'll wait on you. And those that need to leave, you can leave. But if you need to come, come right now and we'll be glad to pray for you and you can confess Christ to us, to me.